Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and I've got a very special video for you today that follows just an hour after Apple's press conference that tackled the iPhone 4 reception issue. Now what makes this video special is just after the press conference finished I managed to grab a video chat with Adam from the MacCast. Now those of you who don't know about Adam, if you head on over to maccast.com you can find out details about his podcast. He's one of the original podcasters and his his podcast actually contains a plethora of very useful information everything to do with the Mac so I urge you to check that out now very quickly before I play you the video chat that I had with Adam I want to just bring you up to date about what happened in the press conference now basically Steve Jobs has said that the uh, reception issue is easily solved with a bumper case he's offering a free bumper case to all iPhone 4 purchasers from now until the end of September. Anyone who's already bought a bumper case can contact Apple and get a refund for the case. And for those new purchasers, if there are no bumper cases in stock or available, then they will offer you a third party case free of charge. Now, for those of you who don't want to keep their iPhone 4s, you can return them in good condition within 30 days of purchase. And then a little bit of extra news tagged on was the availability of the white iPhone 4 which is going to be at the end of July and also 30th of July there's going to be 30 more countries getting the iPhone 4 so without further ado I'm going to bring you the video chat that I had with Adam from the MacCast so I, hi Adam how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good how are you doing Dave? excellent excellent very good so as you know we've just uh, been watching the press conference that Apple yeah. held um, Big, big surprises for me for how they've sort of uh, handled the issue. How, how do you think overall they um, handled the press conference tonight? Uh, pretty much how I thought they were going to handle it. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I, I figured that they would try and um, refute what the press has been saying, you know, say that the press is kind of uh, taking things out of proportion, mm -hmm. uh, that it's gotten out of control, trying calm calm the fears. I, I found it interesting that they were doing that while talking to the same press that have been report, <laughs> reporting mm, this. Mm. <laughs> so, it, you know, that that seemed like they were saying, look, you guys are you guys are taking this out of proportion, but you know, yeah. they weren't that wasn't the voice they were using. They were saying, you know, this thing has gotten out of proportion and and here's what we understand. I knew they were going to throw out facts and figures in terms of numbers and say, you know, this is a small percentage of our customers that are complaining about this. Mm -hmm. And it's actually something I've been talking about on my show, even in my own personal experience. And I've been talking about the difference between what I'm calling kind of the, the clinical analysis of this uh, of this issue versus the real world analysis. Yeah. And my experience has been exactly that. In in that, um, actually, prior to the update yesterday, the 4.0.1 update, um, I couldn't drop a call when I was doing the so-called grip of death. Right. Uh, after the update, though, I could drop a call, but again, I had to specifically be trying to, to bridge that gap. I had to use my phone in a way that I normally wouldn't use it mm. when just taking a normal phone call. Mm. When, I, when I normally hold it in my hand, I cradle it in a way, even in my left hand, where I would never, my hand would never come in contact with that gap. Right. But if I forced my hand into that gap, well, boom, the call would drop. Mm. And I think that's what Apple's responding to, right? They're saying, look, you can see this in these in these studies and these tests and these YouTube videos, but none of our customers are coming in droves to our stores wanting to return their phones or telling us that they're having a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. I don't know if you picked up on it that obviously at the beginning of the press conference they um, had a big dig at BlackBerry and uh, HTC and Samsung by showing their three phones having similar uh, sort of problems. Why, yeah. why do you think that when those phones were launched, we didn't have an influx of people saying, hey, the BlackBerry Bold's come out and when you hold it this way, you know, it, it drops signal. What, why do you think it only becomes apparent when, they, when Apple release a product? Because we're really talking about two separate issues, and that's the one thing with the press that Apple didn't address in this, and I, and I was kind of sad that they didn't, make, they didn't make the distinction between, you have two issues going on here. Um, and we've talked a little bit about this on um, the We Have Communicators podcast that I also do. And that is, is you have attenuation 
which is the blocking of the signal by, say, your hand, versus, in this case, the bridging of those two antennas, which I'm, I'm calling detuning. Some people call it shorting out. Yeah. But in essence, what's happening is you have two separate antennas that are on the outside of the phone that are running at different frequencies, picking up different signal frequencies. And my understanding, I'm no expert in this, but my understanding from everything I've read and some other people that I've spoken with is that what happens is, is that your flesh, your finger, causes that those two signals to kind of get crossed and mixed up and then what happens is is that the phone has a hard time distinguishing between the cell signal the call signal that it's trying to hold on to and therefore it drops and i have to wonder if certain frequencies aren't more susceptible to this to this than others because i have seen reports that it seems to be more of a problem in the u.s than in other countries which always baffled me a little bit um but overall, I think the, the effect is the same. And the, so the difference in the design of the iPhone is you have the antennas on the outside where you can actually cause this kind of detuning yeah. to happen by completing that, that circuit, so mm. to say. Mm. Right. And do you think they've done enough? Just by, I mean, I was expecting them to, to not announce a recall, but to say that they are really working hard on a, on a hardware fix on it and really admitting it was more of a hardware issue than something that they're not seeing a great deal of uh, returns on. Do you, yeah, do you no. think they did enough with this case offer? or? <laughs> well, the case offer is going to appease the people out there who are concerned about this issue, and, and um, it does take care of the problem. I, you know, I, I use a bumper case on my phone, and I have bought it since day one. I got it mainly because I was concerned about the durability of the glass yeah. screen, and I wanted something, and it was the only thing that was available. And now it benefits me in this situation. I'm, I, I have to get the details now about how I get my, how I get my refund. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, ultimately, now that I, now that I have the problem where I can drop a call by doing Doing the detuning, I do think, and I, I, I found the September 30th cutoff date interesting. Yeah, I, I kind of feel that Apple is working on an engineering fix, but they're not going to admit to the public that they're doing anything. It's it's yeah. one of these things that they're going to quietly roll out, and then for the people like me who have a phone where we we can do this detuning issue, the way they'll handle it is I will go in at one point to the genius bar and say, look, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And they'll pull it behind the counter and they'll plug it into their machine and, and you know, do their thing. And then they'll say, oh, you know what? We're going to give you yeah. a new phone. Yeah. And they're going to slide me a new one with the new fix. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> and they'll hand, <laughs> handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. And this is, this is nothing new new for for Apple. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think it's the right response from a corporate perspective. Is it the right response from a uh, being transparent perspective? No. Mm -hmm. Is it the right response from the stock price and a, a corporate perspective? Yes, I think they did what they needed to do. They did what they needed to do to, to say to the public, look, we're, we're aware of the issue, but look, it's really a minor issue. Mm -hmm. And hey, we're being the good guys. We're going to give you a free bumper case or a free case of your choice if you have this problem. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, they come off looking looking pretty good, like they handled it, but they never had to admit that there's a design flaw in the phone. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you on this end of September thing. I, I picked up on that as well, that they're, they're more than likely going to be handing out a sort of revision B handset by then. Right. So it'll be interesting yeah. after September when I fix it and, and these different companies get a hold of new phones yeah. and start tearing it down to see what, what's happened on the, yeah. on the innards. Yeah. Um, there were some reports that there might be a software fix for this, but I don't know how you could do a software fix unless there's some way, like I said, the, the, the issue seems to be the mixing of the two uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's something in software where you could resolve that noise somehow. I, I, I don't know. So that when the phone detects that it's getting this mixing of, yeah. the, of the signals, could you mm -hmm. do something in software? And again, I'm not an antenna expert no. uh, to know if that's even something feasible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe there's some sort of switching mechanism they can turn on in the software or change change it so it actually switches quicker. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. 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 yeah and, and that may be part of the reason why I'm I'm I and they may have been playing with some of that already with the four point oh point one update. That's kind of my own personal speculation about why I can now drop a call mm. by doing the, the, the grip of death after the software update is yeah. that maybe I'm in an area and, I, I, and it's confirmed by the new mm. change in the software bars. Mm. You know, I did see my bars significantly go down from five bars. I now see about two bars in the same right. place where I was before. So mm. chances are I'm on an edge signal. I might be in an area where there's a couple weak cell towers. Yeah. And maybe the fact that it's switching quicker 
is mm-hmm. what's causing that that call to drop. Whereas maybe before, the set the signal would go down, but I'd hold on to that that weak signal, and maybe now it's trying to jump to another tower or something like that, and that yeah. connection just doesn't happen. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I mm-hmm. really don't know. All I know is is the uh, physical evidence that I have that literally I can call a phone on my iPhone without the bumper case on, and the minute that I bridge that gap, yeah. it will I will get a call failed mm. almost instantaneously, and I've done it a dozen times now. Yeah, so. yeah. Maybe we see this uh, this revision <laughs> B come out a little bit quicker than we we're, we're originally thinking, because they also announced thirty more countries for the thirtieth yeah. of July. So are yeah. they going to be sending out non-fix? iPhone 4s to these well, 30 countries. No, my speculation is that they already have the fixed phones in mm. in the pipeline, mm. um, and probably the new countries will be getting those those new devices. I think what's going on though is there is probably now well, maybe not because there are still shortages. But you have to wonder if there aren't some already in shipping containers already mm. in channel that don't have the fix applied to them. Yeah. So, or maybe they're just giving existing customers who have the phones, the two or three million phones that are already out there, enough time to get into the Apple Store to 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 take advantage of their credit. Yeah. Which, yeah. so it's probably actually the latter. Mm. You know, my guess is there's new phones with a new fix going out either now or very soon, and that the the thirty the until September thirtieth is enough time for the people who want to get you know new cases in. Mm. And not be able to say, oh, I, I missed. So, because if they said you have until you know the end of June, it might not be quick enough for yeah. everybody who doesn't realize they have this problem yet to, mm-hmm. to get in. Mm-hmm. What, just just one other question for you. There was something, um, and it just escapes me that A and AT and T was sending out to customers uh, some sort of little mini uh, mini <laughs> sort of device. The micro, the the mic- micro cell, yeah, micro absolutely. Cell, yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't know if they have these over over in Europe or 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 not, but no, um, no. yeah, what 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 it is is it's a little you know box that you can get. It, it kind of looks like your cable modem or your DSL modem or something yeah. like that, um, and you actually hook it up to your own ISP's service, so your cable modem, DSL modem, and it creates a little uh, mini uh, 3G hotspot in your home. So yeah. it's a personal 3G signal. Uh, and it's being given out to some customers who are in, in weak signal areas. Um, as a matter of fact, Katie Floyd from the Mac Power Users podcast um, has one. Because she is in, she's always been in an area where there's really weak AT&T coverage. And it has not resolved the detuning issue for her. And I was right. chatting with her earlier today. And I, I realized, I don't know why it took me a while to realize this, but... I don't think that the drop calls it, it, when you detune the antennas is related to the signal strength. Mm-hmm. I, again, I think it's a mixing of the frequencies and then the phone doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know how to react to right. this new frequency. So even if you had a strong signal, I would imagine the effect could be the same because it's just it's jumbled. It's getting a jumbled mm-hmm. response. Yeah. So whether it's strong or weak probably isn't going to matter. Maybe it's more susceptible if you have a weak connection. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't... I, and again, this is all theor- theoretical. I, I need to uh, probably yeah. talk to an antenna expert to figure out exactly what's going on. But I, I, but from Katie's evidence, she has a microcell and she can get it to drop in the same way that um, she can without it. And, and, and I found it interesting, though, some of her screenshots, I think it showed that her micro, even with the microcell, she only had about three bars. In really? Her house. So <laughs> maybe she's on a there. weird place <laughs> of the planet where there's some magnetic interference or something like that. <laughs> Oh dear. So, how are you liking your iPhone 4 anyway? Are you getting apart from uh, I absolutely love it. And and again, I think it all has to come back around to what I think Steve Jobs was alluding to, saying that a majority of our customers are not complaining about this mm-hmm. issue. A majority of our customers not, are not reporting dropped calls. And if people are going, well, how could people not be doing that? Well, I have to tell you, I've had a bumper case on since day one. I use my iPhone in the same way I used my iPhone 3GS, and I am having better reception in areas where I had weak signal before, so there's no doubt that the antennas are improved and picking up weaker signals. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not had drop calls, again, nor handling it and using it normally the way I normally would, even without yeah. a case. I, yeah. I, you know, I tried going out a couple days without a case and just using it in my normal usage pattern. Mm-hmm. And it works fine. So you really kind of have to force this issue and that gets back to what I was saying earlier. There's the there's the clinical evidence and then there is the real world scenarios. And I think what Apple's responding to is the correct thing. It's the real world scenarios of people saying, I love this phone. I love the display. 
I love the the speed. I love everything about it, and, and I have to concur. I it's the best iPhone I've I've owned, mm -hmm. and I am not noticing worse. Uh, reception or more drop calls than I had with my 3GS in a normal day-to-day -day usage. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not probably going to be returning it. Um, if I do find out there's a design change and I can get a and I can get a newer phone, I, I might be looking to to swap it out for one that doesn't have the design flaw. But yeah. do I really do I really need it for my normal usage? No. I mean, the answer really is no. If I'm being honest with myself, mm. will you be getting your refund on your bumper case? <laughs> oh, absolutely! I'm not going to turn down you know thirty free dollars. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> yeah, I just need to figure out how that works. Whether I get a refund or a store credit, or a, I don't know how they're going to be rolling that out. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's even an email in my inbox right now. So yeah, excellent. Right. Well, just one last question, and then I'm going to let yeah. you go because I know it's a sort of busy day for you. There has <laughs> also been a few uh, reports and and sort of journalists talking about how. Um, Apple's focus is really changing lately because they're yeah. coming out with obviously iPad, iPhone 4, no sort of talk or advancements on the Mac desktop scene or with OS X. Do you right. feel that their focus is changing a lot? Do you think they're changing into sort of this consumer electronics company and, and moving away from their computer lines? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely do. I, I would point anybody to go check out the um, interview Steve Jobs did at the D All Things Digital Conference. Mm. If you haven't caught that, I know it's available, I think, um, on iTunes, yeah. as a matter of fact, as a, as a free download. You can also get it on the, um, on the website, the D All Things Digital website, and that's uh, the Wall Street Journal's conference they do every year. And, you know, he, he said that basically he believes the iPad is the future of uh, consumer computing mm -hmm. in, in no uncertain terms. And I think, you know, Walt Mossberg said, well, how soon? And he said, I don't know. You know, he mm -hmm. said it could be one mm -hmm. year, it could be three years, it could be... He, he didn't nail down a time frame, but I do think yeah. that Apple sees that as the future. And I think to a large extent, they're, they're right. Anybody who's used, used an iPad can see this for most of their work uh, becoming how they compute. And I have to be honest, I, my MacBook Pro leaves my desk a lot less yeah. uh, when I go out to do things. Um, so I, I do see that coming. I don't think that they're abandoning the Mac, though. And I think that what we're going to see, though, is not as frequent update cycles. And I don't know yeah. that that's necessarily a bad thing in the Apple world, because for me personally, um, you know, I'm on a three to five year computer cycle, so I don't need Apple to release a, a new MacBook Pro yeah. every every year. Um, the the bigger the larger concern, and we we talked about this. I did a recent episode um, that I'm calling a no cast with uh, the MacBreak Tech or not MacBreak Tech anymore. It's called uh, uh, no uh, blanking on the Is it going uh, blank? <laughs> the show name. It's my it's my favorite podcast. Now I have to I have to slap myself. Uh, no tech. No tech. A K K N O W tech. Right. And and uh, we had the same conversation. And they're mm -hmm. in the in the uh, video production sort of professional world. And I do think in that world. Um, there's a little more concern about Apple's shift in focus. Uh, you know, the shift towards more consumer, because those are the industries, the professional video and, and publishing industries and stuff like that, those are the industries that held up Apple through the lean times in the 90s. You know, yeah. they're, they're the ones that were buying computers, and they buy large volumes of computers, and they always need the latest and greatest uh, best processors. You know, they want the latest Intel, fastest 8-core, 24-core whatever it is. And so I think for them it is a little bit of a concern that Apple is on a little slower release cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with things like Final Cut Studio and, and those applications, there's features they'd like to see bolted on. And it could be an opportunity where competitors like Adobe bringing back um, Premiere has an opportunity to get in there and maybe take market share away from Apple. The question is, is does Apple care if they lose uh, their Final Cut Cut Pro market share, mm -hmm. and that I'm not so sure about anymore, yeah. and which is surprising yeah. because that was a big focus for them mm -hmm. um, five years ago. So there's mm -hmm. definitely a shift there. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fantastic. Thank you very, very much for speaking with us. Oh yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, and hopefully we can do this again sometime, and I'll um, right. I'll speak to you again soon. All right, thanks Take very care. much, Adam. Cheers. Bye bye.